Lewis LH hydraulic mountain bike disc brake. Let's see how it's made. First, let's look at the exterior of this brake. The lever is mostly made out of milt and then anodized aluminium. Uh, there are screws and other hardware like this hose fitting made out of stainless steel. The logo here is laser etched on this version facing towards the rider. Uh, the clamp here uh, in, in this version, unfortunately, it does not support uh, the shifter mount, but it's made like this. It car carries just tensile forces when braking, and for compressive forces, there's this brace. So it just works like this. Um, the bleed port is here. The brake system uses mineral oil. There are bearings for the main uh, pivot of the lever blade. Uh, here is the reach adjuster, which moves the initial braking point of the lever away or towards the handlebars. And there's a contact point adjuster in the middle. So this is how much of free stroke you have before the pistons in the caliper engage. The caliper is also made out of two pieces of milled aluminium. There's a bench of fitting for, um, for the hose, also made out of stainless steel. And the pistons inside are also made out of stainless steel. There's also some laser etching, logos. Everything is anodized. It's a good piece of equipment. The hose braided and protected so it's not scratching the frame and it's uh, able to carry higher, higher pressures than the normal hose. Let's quickly compare it to SRAM code. So this is the Lewis LH and this is the SRAM code lever. Lewis is asymmetrical, so the rear brake, the right lever, is different from the left lever, so you can't swap them like you can do it on SRAM. The body looks a little bit smaller, but count also this in. And uh, the lever blade is longer on Lewis for quite some millimeters. If I try to align the pivot points like this, you see it's about almost one centimeter longer. So there's a higher leverage ratio, probably, in the Lewis. The SRAM also has this uh, movement of the lever, which Lewis does not. Uh, this one uses uh, dot fluid, braking fluid, and Lewis uses mineral oil. Comparing also the calipers, Lewis is a little bit smaller. Uh, the SRAM has this, this uh, bleeding catch attachment for bleed port and the Lewis has um, M5 attachment here. Um, Lewis uses um, Hope E4 shape of the brake pads and SRAM of course has their own. This brake has not been used yet, but I'm curious how it's made and I will take it apart. I have to take care because uh, later I have to put it back together and I should not damage anything. This is my spare brake. So I doubt I'll be able to remove all the four pistons from the caliper without using a blind bearing puller, which currently I don't have on hand. Okay, let's start. Hmm. First remove this bleed block. Okay. 
what does it say? EZ mountain bike, EZ MTB. Okay, this is probably their supplier. They are also using the hoses from the same company. EZ MTB. Now I'll try to just activate the lever to pump the oil in and see whether one of the pistons pops out. Which one? Which one will be the first? Oh, here it is. It fell out. And there's a puddle of oil. Okay. Will you come out or not? Come on. Come out. Yes. Ooh. Nice turned piston. Hmm. There's also some recession from the oil side. Probably to increase the volume of oil in the caliper to make it less susceptible to overheating. I don't know. This one uses two different sizes of pistons and now there's no pressure left. I cannot pull them further out. So we have to disassemble it. These two screws are carrying all the forces generated by the hydraulic system. So they have to be strong. Okay, let's see. Okay, come on. Oh, the oil is leaking. I have to wipe it. Okay, this is one half of the caliper. There's an O-ring seal in seat. There's nothing. These screws looks like they've been custom made out of stainless steel. There's some thread locker on it. Also, oh, there's another. Is that O-ring? It's one O-ring. Oh, all this just remains of the thread locker of the thread locker, I don't know. So, the oil comes through this uh, banjo connector into this half of the caliper and through this hole, uh, which is sealed by this O-ring into another half. There should be one hole which is connecting both uh, chambers, both cylinder bores, and there's a square uh, seal uh, which seals the piston against the cylinder. But I can't see where this oil passage is. Everything is so dark here. Oh, we need here. Okay, there it is. There's a hole. This hole connects both cylinders together. Okay, can also set the angle. Two O-rings, one of in one on each side. Six. Six millimeter banjo. Okay, I will just put everything side and I will later reassemble it. This uh, this coloration here is probably due to production process where they hang it like this in the beds when they are up um, anodizing the part. Okay, mm, bleed port, I can open also open the bleed port. No, smaller. Hmm. Okay, this is uh, M M5 screw for the bleed port, and it's interesting. The green 
a ring is used here. They're usually used for high temperature or um, chemically demanding applications. So I don't know why have they decided to use a green ring here. Okay, just put it in, back in. Let's continue with the lever. So let's first remove this hose fitting. Uh, this hose is torsionally rigid to it, so um, when shortening it, you have to be lucky to get it um, on the way it's not twisted, so... But usually this is not a problem, maybe a few degrees of turn and that's it. Okay, let's remove the hose fitting. So it's slot number 8. Unscrew it like this. There's an O-ring which seals the fitting to the lever body. And I can disassemble it further. We'll take the same number eight as before and six oh it's quite inconvenient because there's no surfaces to lean your key on but whatever you're not doing this every day so this is how the hose is attached to the fitting There is no olive. See, nothing. Just these two parts of the fitting. They squeeze the hose onto this conical shape here. And that's it. You can just buy the hose by meter and assemble it together. On the other side, it's the same principle. I will not assemble it. Okay, the lever is now free of its hose and let's disassemble it. First, let's remove this clamp. Okay. This clamp is quite complicated, made out of three parts. So lower, upper and the hinge, which is pressed in. And also this screw. Oh quite a part it's been tinted out here most likely made on CNC lead not the cheapest to produce probably um, this one goes in from the bottom Stop like this uh, this I suspect this shape of the screw is because the upper one does not totally engage and when you squeeze it together it pulls the lever towards the handlebars so when you it's not just just clamping it together but also pulling everything together on the handlebar okay let's set it aside uh, let's remove this split port screw mm, this one's too big one smaller oops again high temperature seal and we are leaking oil again <laughs> yeah it's quite messy and uh, same like the brakes um, I will put this screw these two screws out so this is Torx Reservoir full of oil, diaphragm and the cover. I'll just try to remove a little bit of oil like this to reduce the number of puddles on my table. Okay, two screws, set them aside, 
cover milled machined cover with etched uh, logo on it i think they should turn, turn it around otherwise it's symmetrical except for this breathing hole here through this hole the air moves uh, when the oil is being i don't know so the volume of oil has been reduced or increased uh, the air will composite for, through it this is the diaphragm this part um, separates the oil on this side from the outside world from the air on this side so it compensates for changes in oil volume in the lever uh, it's made out of rubber it has these ridges which can lean on each other so even if we over pressurize the system there will be no excessive forces uh, on this um, on this diaphragm and it will not rupture because it will just expand until it reaches its limit like on each other like this together or onto the wall of the lever the only complaint i would have is there's a bleed port and the bleed port is perpendicular to these ridges so if there's a air bubble inside you will have maybe some difficulties getting it out through this bleed port but uh, if you cycle the oil a few times it should not be a problem here inside you can see the oil passage from the reservoir to the cylinder bore and the piston moving inside. Okay, I found a small screwdriver, which is small enough to remove this small screw, the grab screw, which holds this reach adjuster on its shaft. I will not remove it completely, just a few turns and then unscrew it. Shit. It fell out. You gotta be careful not to lose it. Put it back in. Now I have to screw this one in to get it through the whole thread to get the lever out. Okay, the lever is off. This is our lever. Machined, two bearings for the this uh, con rod or how to say pusher, bearing, um, piston pusher. And now everything is left. I have to remove this snap ring and get the piston out. Quite hard to get it out. Here it is. It was quite tough to get it out. It's really deep inside and it's really hard to reach the snap ring with the pliers. But nevertheless, there it is. So this is the main pusher rod. And this screw is the adjustment of the reach. It, this moves on the level plate. We have some kind of washer, really thick washer here and a snap ring. And inside this pusher rod, there's another rod which is adjustable by this screw. And this is the free stroke adjuster or the contact point adjuster. So this length. Okay. Piston is inside. Let's try to get it out. I'll push it from the other side. And here it is. Okay. It looks like it has one directional seal here. Return spring and arm or ring as the backup ring. Um, the color of it is a little bit yellowish and probably 
This means it's made out of peak. It's polyether ether ketone. It's, how to say, one of the toughest and most chemically and temperature resistant thermoplastic plastics available on the market. It's not cheap, but it's probably one of the best you can get. This piston will not swell. It will not swell and get stuck in the lever like, I don't know, it happens on SRAM or Shimano's. Return spring. That's it.